Some home movies capture bright, happy times. Some can capture embarrassingly cringeworthy moments. In this episode, we learn that some home movies are best left in the attic. Join Wes and Steve as they watch along as Ethan Hawke unearths an attic full of mysterious and disturbing home movies, unleashing the unnerving supernatural force behind Sinister. And now it's time for an all-new episode of View the Right Thing. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Hey, welcome back to another episode of View the Right Thing. We didn't even plan that. I know, but we're good like that, baby. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So hopefully we sound better than we did last time. Um, last time we had a bit of a... a uh, Equipment microphone situation. We tried new new equipment. It didn't work so well for us. This is true. So now we're trying something different this week. Newer, new equipment. I'm drinking. Hopefully it doesn't show up too much in the audio. I just cleared my throat, uh, but I put my hand over my mic. Yeah, that probably I wonder, I wonder what that'll sound like. Not good. No? Probably not. <clears throat> I wonder. I wonder, man. Welcome to View the Right Thing, Wes. Welcome, Steve. I am your co-host, Steve Moulton. You're my co-host, Wes Weitzenhofer. That's true. We're here today to discuss a very specific movie and also discuss movies in general. Yeah, we've got, we got two movies we can discuss today. Yeah. Because we watched a movie that is in some theaters right now. Oh. Um, but first, it's been, it's been a, little bit, a little bit of time. What have you been up to? My gosh, what have I been up to? Um, I've been doing a little more stand-up. Uh, work's been real nice and busy. I've been auditioning a lot, though not quite as much as I like to audition, which is, you know, all day, every day. Yeah. It's what I like to do. We went to a baseball game. Yeah, dude, we saw that Dodgers-Pirates game, man. It was I crazy. I saw my first Grand Slam. Mm-hmm. And that was pretty awesome. Wes took me to a Dodgers game. Saw my first Grand Slam, followed very shortly by P- Puig, 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 Puig's yeah, Puig. home run. That was pretty cool. Pretty cool time. Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah. Maybe you've heard of them. Our mutual friend Joey just did a shoot with Yasiel Puig. Oh, yeah. Like I haven't right, seen right the video of that. that. Have, they done, have they shown that video yet? I don't think so. If you've ever wondered who we're talking about when we mention Joey, check out MeToo.com. M-I-T-U. M-I-T-U dot com. Me Too. That's how they say it. Yeah. Me Too. Um, gosh, that already feels like forever ago, and it really wasn't very long ago couple at all. A week, couple weeks, maybe. It was a week and a half. Yeah. At most. All right. Maybe less. If you say so. I don't even know what I say anymore. I've become unstuck in time, Wes. Unstuck in time? Yeah, did you ever see uh, 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 or see or read Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut? I did not. And the the main character, Billy Pilgrim, talks about being unstuck in time because he's kind of experiencing this thing where he's just like constantly jumping around in different segments of time throughout his own life Mm -hmm. and history in general, and it's very... Very confusing and alarming. Frankly, it's alarming. I, I, yeah, okay. I would imagine. Good old Billy Pilgrim, man. Billy Pilgrim. We had to watch that in uh, college in band books class. Billy Thompson owns the night. Billy Thompson does own the night. I haven't watched that a second time. Hard to believe, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> um, it's funny because we, we just watched a movie... The second film we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And you were, you had a bit of a coffee countdown situation during the film. Boy, did I. We had to stop and get you coffee. (laughs) We had to literally stop the film and put coffee in me because I was dozing off so hardcore. And now all of a sudden I feel sleepy. Uh Uh-oh. Well, let's make this quick then, baby. Oh, no. Nobody wants just a quick podcast, do they? Maybe they do. Uh, Maybe maybe on our podcast they want quick. Quick for us is still going to be like an hour and ten minutes. Three and a half hours. Yeah. Um, so, have you seen any good trailers lately? Well, uh, you just showed me that trailer for Wakefield. That looks awesome. That looks like a pretty wild movie. And, uh... Brian Cranston, Jennifer Garner. 
Brian Cranston and Jennifer Garner as a couple. Yep. Or are they? They kind of, they pretty much are. Do they? I mean, it's his wife. Right. She plays his wife. She plays his wife, mother of his children, and he plays her husband, father of her children, mm-hmm. who decides <laughs> he's just going to step away from the family. Kind of disappear. But keep watching them. Yeah. That's pretty uh, pretty wild idea. He says something in the trailer about how he didn't leave his family. Right, he left himself. Yeah. Wakefield. He does stay. He stays like next door or something. Yeah. Nearby. Looks good. It looks like it's definitely going to be an interesting watch. That's for sure. I'm. Uh, I'll see it. And I'll the, see it. I noticed they put Academy Award winner Brian or nominee. Oh yeah. Brian Cranston on the. On the title cards. He got nominated for what? Trumbo. 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 Write me a script in your bathtub. Trumbo. I did a play in college about Trumbo and all the rest of the Hollywood 10. Were you in Trumbo? Were you, were you Trumbo? No, I played the real jerky uh, uh, sort of senator who was really going hardcore after everybody and being a real jerk. What a jerk. Yeah, I forget his name Macar- now. McCarthy? No. Not Joseph McCarthy? Not McCarthy. Um, the guy, you know, in Trumbo. I haven't seen Trumbo. Oh, well, then I won't spoil anything for uh, you. Okay. But I'll tell you, I played the biggest jerk in the whole play. Okay. And I loved it. Well, because it's like the exact opposite of who you are in real life. Yeah, I mean, I'm... You're such a nice... I, I feel like I'm like a bit of a jerk. But I feel like everybody should have a little bit of jerk. I don't think you're much of a jerk at all. I like to think that you're right. But I feel like, I mean, everybody should have just a little bit of like, hey, get away from me, you know, so that they can like fend certain people off because certain people are even bigger jerks. Sure. So you got to be able to tell those big jerks like, hey, back up. Back up. J-E-R-K. I didn't want to say it because the dog... He shouldn't learn words like jerk. Oh, he's being a jerk. Ooh. So, uh, okay. Any other trailers you saw? I saw um, Megan Levy. Megan Levy? Yeah. It's a true story about a woman who bonds with a bomb dog uh, in, a, uh, I don't know if it was Afghanistan like or a, not. a bomb sniffing dog? Yeah, like a, not a dog that is a bomb, but a dog that right. sniffs out bombs. That's what I want to clarify. And it's like a dog that like doesn't get along with anybody else, but she creates, a, she forms a bond with it, and um, she has to leave the dog behind. Oh, um, Megan. Because she gets injured. And it's a true story. And I mean, if you know the story of Megan Levy, then you kind of already know what happens, but uh, it looks like a good tear-jerking kind of... Megan Levy. Movie about people in the bonds of, with their animals. I have Sounds adorable. much less of a bond with Walt right now. Well... Just because he's being... He's having an off butt. day. He's having a bad day. Um, anything else? Let's see, I saw Star Wars. I finally saw the new Star Wars trailer. Oh, for exciting. The Last Jedi. Yeah. Uh, I have seen that trailer. It is very exciting. Um, they leave a lot of questions. I still think Ray's going to end up flipping. Whoa, dude. You may be on to something. I really don't know what to expect. I feel like they've, they've, they've set up enough cool things mm-hmm. in The Force Awakens mm-hmm. that could take unexpected directions and become even cooler mm-hmm. or could sort of, you know, ride the path more traveled and meet a lot of expectations and just the good guys all remain good, the bad guys all remain bad, who knows. But, uh, you know, it's Star Wars. As oversaturated as I am with Star Wars for the last uh, four years of my life, I'm still excited to see a new movie. Kylo Ren's going to be a good, a good guy, you'll see. Hey, you never know. If that happens, I owe you a nice tea. All right. Well, if you think about it, he most wants to be like his grandfather. Like Grandpa Vader. And what happens with his grandfather? Well, spoiler alert. Yeah. He does one good thing at the end of a movie and redeems himself. Yeah. Oh, those Sith. 
Crazy, crazy shit. I feel like I'm shouting. Am I shouting? Uh, no, you're doing good. You're doing good. Wave form looks good. Can you tell I haven't had much coffee today? Um, no. I mean, I can because I can see you, but not looking at the waveform. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, what about you? Any other any other trailers? Trailers, trailers, trailers. Um, I don't know. Well, you showed me that trailer for the lo- the little hours. Uh huh. That looks like it'll be pretty funny. Yeah, Aubrey Plaza, Nick Offerman. Kate McCucci. Kate McCucci. Molly Al- Shannon. Allison Brie. Allison Brie, Fred Armisen. And John C. Riley. Dave Franco. Dave Franco, yeah. So many more. Nick Offerman. I, yeah, I said you that. You said earlier. that, yes. Yeah. Um, it's going to be funny. I, uh, speaking of Dave Franco, uh, I, have, I have read that uh, the disaster artist... Oh, boy. ...is coming out... At the beginning of December, I think it was December first. Whoa! In limited, and then a week or two later, it's going to go wide. Real wide. I am going to make a funny face while trying not to sneeze. Oh right boy, now. he's making a funny face, you guys. One eye is kind of closed, the other one's like squinty. He's sniffing. He's trying to cover up the mic, but it doesn't really matter. No. No, it doesn't really matter. The mic can hear through my solid hand. I mean, you're showing up on the waveform. Wow, dude. Okay, the urge to sneeze has subsided for now. Let's see. Do you, want, do you want to hear some cool movie news? Uh, yes. Um, my buddy Skyler, uh, who's involved with the new film Awaken the Shadow Man. Yeah. Uh, that just got an article in this week's Variety, which is pretty cool. Uh, they've got a release date. They've got some headlines and ink flowing and going on about them. So yeah. keep your eyes out for Awaken the Shadow Man. You know, something else, too. We had this another little piece of you talking about our friends. Yeah. Our friend and one-time co-host on View the Right Thing, Daniel Weiss. Oh, yeah. Is in a movie that's going to um, have a little debut at the Dances with Film Festival in Dances with Hollywood. Film. And uh, on June, I think it's the first or the second. Yeah. It's a, it's a Friday night. I've got second in my mind. Maybe. Whichever one of those is a Friday night. Yeah. Um, at like 7.30, I think. Cool. Maybe 5.30. I can't remember. I think 7.30. Is it called The Spearhead Effect? It's called The Spearhead Effect. Sounds scary. It's a scary film. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what ends up happening with that. A, a movie, I'll be there. A movie called Spearhead Effect should either be like scary or it should be about like a really awesome like Navy SEAL or Delta Force team. Yeah. And then they do spearhead stuff. Or it's about like... Because they're the spearhead before the rest of the military gets there to mop oh, up. the tip of the spear. That was like a Mormon movie or something, wasn't it? The tip of the spear? Yeah. I, I don't know. It was that about, must be about Jesus, huh? Well, it was about missionaries who like went into the Amazon, didn't they? And they just got savaged and eaten. I don't know what you're talking about. I think that's what happened in the tip you, of the spear. Are you talking about the Green Inferno? Well, that too, uh, which I started to watch when I was dog sitting here. Oh, like one HBO time. or something, HBO Go. It's or on something, HBO right? Go, and uh, I got to, like, I got to like the capturing scene, and I was like, eh, okay, I've, I pretty much know what's going to happen to these poor, poor jerks. Yeah. And I just I had to turn it off. You must relax, young man. I'm talking to the very cute dog who's being real jerky today. Get down, get down. Yeah. Get down. Get down, get down. He thinks he's going to catch a fly, and it just ain't going to happen, listeners. It is not. Should we talk about Guardians of the Galaxy uh, not, 2? Not in detail. Not in detail, but you've seen it, right? Sure, I've seen it. Overall, vague, non-spoiler thoughts. I didn't think it was as good as the first one. All right. Um... I didn't think the music was as good. I don't. I don't know if it's just they just these were the rejects songs from the first film or oh, what. Oh, I don't think that's the case. Um, I didn't feel like they fit the scenes very well, with the exception of the opening. Um, Brandy, the op- you're a fine girl by Looking Glass. No. Yeah. No, the first song was the ELO song. No. no the first song was Brandy, you're a fine girl, and then. The oh, ELO okay. Song. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. The first big like musical. I get you. Thing, not what was. On the radio in the car. I get you. Um, 
Yeah, the ELO song I thought worked really well. Yeah. I no. actually saw somebody put uh, put that song to um, the fight scene with Batman in uh, Batman versus Superman. Oh, really? Yeah, the one where he's beating up all the bad guys. Funny. Uh, kind of near the end of the film, and it 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 makes that scene kind of comical and fun to watch. That's cool. Not that that scene was bad or anything. I actually thought that was one of the scenes that worked. Um, I, uh, I don't film. remember much from Batman vs. Superman. But Guardians, yeah. I, uh, I don't know. It was okay. It uh, was... Um, yeah. The thing I think is it's being sort of like hailed for. Right. I didn't... I don't know. I don't know how I felt about it. Like it, the big thing is like, oh, they made a movie that was about family. Mm. Rather than a love story. Yeah. Which I guess I, is a nice break. Because all those... Movies have, you know, Iron Man and Pepper Potts or Thor and Jane Foster. Oh, yeah. Spider-Man and whoever he falls in love with. Usually Mary Jane. Mary Sometimes Jane or Gwen. Gwen Sometimes Stefani. It's Gwen. Um, Sometimes it's Gwen Stefani. Well, and there's a new girl in the new movie, in the new <laughs> Spider-Man movie. Oh, there is? Yeah. The girl oh, from the Disney Channel is playing... Zendaya. She's playing someone named Michelle. Michelle James. But she's nerdy, so I don't know. Oh, boy. But, but you, I bet she's, like, secretly attractive. If you go to a science high school, like, is everybody nerdy? I guess so. Midtown Science High? We'll only know when we watch Spider-Man in, what, ten more years? When does that come out? On my birthday. Whoa. On your brother's birthday. Oh, cool. Technically, the release date is, the official release date is the 7th, but there are showings on the 6th, so therefore... It's a birthday present to me and your brother. Pretty cool. I'm going to say this about Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. Volume 2. Yes. It is not quite as good as the first one, nor could it ever be. Okay. Because much like Anchorman 2 and Anchorman 1 and Guardians 1, Mm -hmm. those movies were so unexpectedly surprising and funny that... It's impossible to be surprised like that while watching the sequel because you're expecting to be surprised and therefore you can't be surprised. But I do think Guardians Volume 2 is still a very good, very enjoyable film and it's better the second time. Okay, I'll trust you on that. So just, you know, go see it once and then if you're kind of like, I don't know how I feel, give it a couple days, go see it again and you're going to like it the second time. I did not see it in 3D. Neither did I. I wonder if I would have liked it more if I had seen it in 3D. Like that opening scene especially seemed really cool. I know that I would not have cared if I yeah, I know. saw We've it in 3D. Before. Um, I, I actually think the first Guardians of the Galaxy is a little overrated. Yeah? Yeah, I think people are a little too in love with that film. Well, I think they have every right to be. Sure, they can live whatever they want. I'm just saying. Uh, it seems, I don't know. People are just a little... little, little you I had think, a poster of it on your wall for many months. Yeah, I was excited about it. Um, it's great. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I, don't get me wrong. I you just, got my dick message. It's like one of my favorite lines ever. Um, I just... Uh, I don't know. Well, okay. You I, cooled I think, on it over the I, last Well, no, I just years. think that it's gotten a lot more love than it needs. I think because it's so different from everything else. Um, that dog, man, just drive me bonkers. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I'll tell you, I wish I that understand. Guardians 2 had a different ending. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I can understand that. Let's let's stop right there. Cause I, won't say, getting, I won't say what it too is. Too close to spoiling. No, no, no. I won't spoil it The for fact anyone. that Groot accidentally winds up in a wood chipper. <laughs> Movie oh, is called boy. Fargo. This guy needs to just take a nap. Um, yeah, so... Uh, have you seen anything else in theater or anything else uh, surprising that's a that's a movie and not a uh, not a series? Uh, there's so much good TV these days; it's ridiculous. Yeah, I watched Phantasm for the first time in about thirty years. Mm. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Yeah, there was a there was a hotly debated comment you made on Twitter <laughs> and Facebook. <laughs> I tweeted it too. If you're tweeting out there, follow me at Steve in NoHoWood. Follow the show at VTRT Movies, which Wes uh, runs and uh, does a pretty good job with, I must say. And uh, let us know what you think about Phantasm versus Suspiria. Technically, I run our Instagram, too. Oh, yeah, true. 
I don't put a lot on there. I, I would I would probably do more of the Instagram and Twitter. We had a little bit more interaction with yeah. the viewsters. I, I want to hear from the viewsters. What they like, what they don't like, so on and so forth. Yeah, viewsters, let us know. I just told you how to let us know. I look forward to reading your letting of us know. I, uh, there was something about Marvel that I was going to say, but now I can't remember what it was. Um, the Defenders happen soon. Uh, no. Thor was, Ragnarok is was, coming I soon. I think it had something to do. It was, it, the idea was forming in my brain with uh, Guardians, but now I can't. I lost it. I That's lost all right. It. We both need coffee today. Yeah, man. I'm drinking a Gatorade right now. Gatorade's just sugar, man. I'm trying to, trying to perk up a little, man. That doesn't, that's not what Gatorade does. Gatorade replenishes you. Oh, I'm, I need to be it replenished. Doesn't, it doesn't perk you up like caffeine. Oh, well, I don't, caffeine doesn't do anything for me. We've been over this. I, nobody wants to hear about my caffeine deficiency. Um, Jimmy Caffeine does. No. I want to go see that movie, um, King Arthur, which doesn't oh, seem to be getting yeah. very good reviews. But oh, no, directed by Guy Ritchie. I hear it has really great moments, like great scenes. But Starring Charlie Hunnam and Jude Law. Yeah, that's about what I expect, though. Featuring the music of Led Zeppelin in the trailer. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll watch it. I'll watch pretty much anything Guy Ritchie, uh, and I'll definitely watch anything King Arthur. What's that Madonna one? You like that Madonna one? Uh, Swept Away. Swept Away, is that your favorite Guy Ritchie movie? It's not my favorite, nor have I ever bothered to watch it. Oh, so you wouldn't watch... Well, I just, I just haven't bothered to. But if I was, like, sitting in a room... Can we put it in the bucket? Mm, sure. I don't want to put it in the bucket. I mean, the odds of us drawing it anytime then, soon are pretty slim. Then I'd have to watch it. That's also true. Uh, but uh, my, my point is, uh, you know, Guy Ritchie, he's made enough interesting movies that if he's going to tackle King Arthur, I'm going to give it a shot. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to love it. I'm not saying I'm going to hate it. I'm saying I will... Give it a shot because King Arthur's cool, and you know it's time for a new good King Arthur. I will say, telling. I was a little bit more excited for it from the original stuff that I saw. Yeah, that didn't have any of the mystical magical stuff in it. All right, and then I saw something recently where they showed some like mystical magical stuff, Ugly. which is kind of steeped in that lore. Right, um, but not what I would want. I I, I want a, like a. Not a historically accurate uh, Guy Ritchie film about King Arthur, but like I want it to kind of feel like it actually takes place in that time period and not have magical stuff going on. But but I mean that's the whole story of King Arthur I do has love... magic all the way through. You but know? what if what if they could explain that story with no magic, the sword and in the a, stone, in a Guy Ritchie way, the Lady of the Lake, Merlin the Magician. Um. All right. That's all magic stuff. Mordred. I saw I saw Get Out finally. Oh, how'd you like Get Out? I liked it a lot. Um, I'll reserve uh, talking too much about it for another time. Maybe, all right. Maybe we can have a deeper discussion about it because there's a lot to kind of unpack in that. All right. It's not it's not it's just a straightforward film. I think if you see it as just a straightforward film, it's you're missing out. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Idea. There's a lot of subtext in that film, is all I'm saying. You can say that again. Commentary on the TSA, commentary on dairy consumption, <laughs> commentary <laughs> on bingo. Yeah, bingo especially. Steven Root, I love Steven Root. Yeah. I want to see him in more stuff. He's been in lots of stuff and he does good work. He Bradley was Milton Wadhams, of all things. Bradley Whitford's also excellent. Yeah. Who's the guy, who's the main guy from, from Get Out? What, the, he, the British guy. Oh gosh, his name escapes me. Yeah, I like him. Do you want this he was, back? He was good. He was, he was quite good in, in the movie, I thought. Yeah, he did a great job. I think, did a great job. Does the, does the dog realize he can get out of there? Uh, maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Come here. You can get out of there. Run around. Or just stay or in your bed and be quiet. Bed. Cool. Yeah, awesome. Good boy. Um, good boy. Easters, what have you seen? What do you want to see? What do you want to hear about? Tell, talk to us. Yes, tweet at Tell us, us at VTRT Movies. Did you say tell us your viewing dreams? Your hopes and dreams, but you know, that too. Oh, yeah. So we have a couple of movies to talk about. Oh, yeah. Which one do you want to do? you want to knock out the mystery movie first? Sure. All right. Mystery movie is called Aftermath. It's in theaters now. You can also uh, 
It's one of those like day and date, you know, on demand slash in theaters. Uh, it stars Arnold Schwarzenegger. No, I've heard of that young man. And Scoot McNary. Oh. And Maggie Grace. Maggie Grace is in it. And the son from Anchorman too. And uh, what's the guy's name? I looked him up. It's the guy that I said was in Pitch and uh, Sons of Anarchy. You did look him up. His Mo name. Mo something. It's McSomething. Mc McLovin. McLovin. No. McLovin. Muhammad's the most common name on earth. Read a book. What is? It's a line from Superbad. Wait, what is, what is the line? When uh, McLovin's like, I was either going to go with McLovin or Muhammad. And oh, Seth yeah. goes, why would you go with McLovin or Muhammad? And McLovin says, Muhammad is the most common name on earth. Read a fucking book. Oh, that's true. That was, uh, that was funny. Mo McRae, who I really like. Um, kind Mo of a... McRae. An underused actor, I feel like. All right. He's, um, he seems almost too real. You know, like there's actors who act. Yeah. And then there's like bad actors right. and then there's good actors who just seem so real he just seems like like that's how he really talks he's not delivering lines well that's perfect yeah he's uh he's pretty good i like him a lot cool um, keep your eyes out for mo mcrae mo mcrae was there a g in there mick Mc gray mick ray mick ray i'm and i'm totally curious about gray. his background now because it sounds like kind of like a Scottish name, right? Well, let's just not go there. What? What? I mean, is there some sort of racial thing that I don't know about? Well, not exactly, but you know, it's you know, it's I'm not saying I'm trying to be presumptuous about like, oh, black people can't have. Well, no, it's usually that when a black person has a name that sounds European, it's because slavery of slavery the and ancestry and all that terrible, it could be terrible that his, like, stuff. Dad or his mom just. It could be. It could be anything. But he was also in the Gridiron Gang. Oh yeah, was that with the Rock and a football team? Yeah. And Wild. Wild. He was in Wild with, uh, um, you know that that girl Reese Witherspoon. Oh, girl. the one where she goes a, a, a hiking and a camping. Yeah. That's a sad movie, man. Just added that to my collection. I think it's a very happy movie. I found it to be very happy. When that little kid sings Red River Valley, forget it, dude. Well, you know, just prior to that, there's a kid that sings... Um, forget it, dude. What did he say? I said, hey, Four Nine Blondes. Oh, the worst song ever written? Yeah, but you know that that guy was, that young man singing that song. Was that actor Nick Eversman? Good friend of... Uh, of ours, Nick Eversman. Nice. He's a good dude, um, that Nick Eversman. He's been doing a lot of, like, TV. He's, he's on ABC's uh, Once Upon a Time. Whoa, the show about all the, the magical uh, green yeah. fairy tale characters? Yeah, he plays... Slash uh, Disney characters? A sort of important character in fantasy literature history. Really? Yeah, kind of. He plays someone adjacent to a very important character in fantasy literature history. Cool. But he's in those scenes, so that's good. Um, I like it. So yes, yeah, so we talked about Mo McRae. We talked about Schwarzenegger. What's Aftermath about, Steve? Uh, as far as I know, Aftermath is based on a true story. Yep. Which starts with the uh, ugh, the mid-air collision of two jet airliners that uh, unfortunately smashed into each other. I would say. The way you're describing it sounds action-packed. Sure. It is the furthest thing from. You never see any of that, really. Right. You get a little, like, glimpse of, like, somebody's idea of what yeah. may have transpired, but there's no... Cool. It, it's beautiful. It's not, it's not horrifying or um, scary. Right. Uh-oh. Uh so I'm, I'm gesturing to Steve. On that, on the edge, do uh, you see it? Yeah. There's a bug that the dog has been going nuts over. That's why he's being a pill today. Oh, you hit him twice. He flew away. Well done. Um, as a fly somehow got in here. So, anyways, uh, yeah. So you don't you don't see um, the the horror of it really. Thank goodness. Although you do see some of the aftermath. You see, yeah, you see some of the the carnage on the ground at the crash site. Very disturbing. 
Uh, and so what it is is uh, Schwarzenegger plays a man named uh, Roman mm-hmm. who lost his wife and daughter on one of those planes. And unborn grandchild. An unborn grandchild. And then Scoot McNeary plays the air traffic controller who was working alone in the tower and trying to handle a few different calls and missed a call coming in from this one plane asking if it was clear for them to descend. And they decided to just descend anyway and crashed into another plane. And it was... There are multiple circumstances that are really out of uh, Jacob's control. Right, absolutely. Um, But at the same time, he's like sort of the guy responsible. So the movie is sort of a... A study on the aftermath and the guilt and the the survivor's guilt and the guilt of feeling like you have killed, you know, 217 people. 71. Or 71, thank you. Um, man, no. That dog. Uh, and there's a really, I don't want to, I don't want to go too spoiler heavy in case people are going to watch it. Um, I will say it's very slow. It's not like when I say you got to run out and see, but right. you know it's a rental. You can rent it pretty cheap. It's kind of cool to be able to see stuff before it's really out on yeah. the video. Um, but uh, there's this sort of this thing that's going on where both of these characters are going through the same sort of grief mm-hmm. at the exact same time, um, completely separate from each other. And they have the same grief for different reasons, but they do share this same grief, um, which ultimately, by the end of the film, kind of puts them at odds. Right. Um, and there's this thing where, uh, again, trying, I'm trying to not spoil how this whole thing works out, but um, nobody does the, the one simple correct thing right. throughout the film. And Ain't that the truth? And it causes more and more pain. And if somebody would just stand up and do the right thing, ha, hey, <laughs> do the right thing in the film, um, a lot of misery could be absolved. Absolutely. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I there are, there's some part of it like the story and the message I really liked. Um, I thought some of the acting was great, um, like when. Uh, Scoot McNary's character, Jacob, um, gets told exactly what happened. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a really great scene on his part. Um, yeah, he does, he does good work. I thought Schwarzenegger was fine. Um, you know, he's a little understated. He's doing this whole, like, grieving father thing in film right now. He did uh, Maggie. Maggie is the one uh, with uh, Abigail, Abigail Breslin. Breslin. Yeah. And now this. Um I don't know. It's interesting. Um, but the movie is so slow. And it's very much about like, hey, we're just going to have this camera here. And we're just going to observe these people. And there's going to, you know, when you're just observing someone, if they don't know you're observing them, they don't talk. Mm-hmm. That's what's going on in this film. It's almost like a little bit of a documentary. Um, oh, interesting. In that, in that style. I mean, it's not really shot like a documentary, but... At times, it feels that way because you're just watching people exist with this grief. Yeah. Um, and that's also kind of hard to watch sometimes, too. Mm-hmm. It may not be everybody's kind of movie. Definitely uh, go do something really, really fun and then watch Aftermath. And you're going to be like, huh, oh, boy. And then have something else fun planned to do right after you watch Yeah, Aftermath. watch Aftermath and then watch Guardians of the Galaxy. There you go. Or something. Um, or... You know, you can watch Sinister. We watched Sinister. We did watch Sinister. You and it scared me a lot. You want to jump straight into Sinister? Sure. I mean, are you good talking about Aftermath? Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Uh, I mean, nothing really comes to mind. It's all its all going to be spoiler heavy, you know, if, yeah. I, if I do. Well, but, uh, yeah, here. you know, uh, good performances. Uh, pretty well shot. I'm no directing expert, but, you know... There was some cool stuff. There were some mistakes going on. There was some yeah. There was some weird stuff with eye lines in yeah. aftermath. It really bothered me. But there were some some shots that I, I remember. There was one up on a balcony in the apartment, kind of yeah. near, near the end of the film. And I thought, wow, that's that's a really great that's a really great shot. I do agree. Sorry, I'm just adjusting here because I picked up the dog. That's okay. He seems a lot happier because he's Maybe with someone he loves. Um, 
But uh, yeah, you know, it's a very new movie. We shouldn't spoil or sp- spoil anything. We we might as well yeah move into that house on whatever that road was that they Elm Street. To. Oh no, it was on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street's on um, Netflix, and I almost want to watch it. Which one? I think the first one and maybe a couple of the sequels, but I'm pretty sure the first one's on there. But not the not the reboot. No, no. Um, but I also just like don't want to watch it. Yeah. Well, like I do, but I don't. It's good. It's pretty Johnny good. Johnny Depp. Oh, Johnny Depp. Hey, I'm Freddy. You're Johnny Depp. Let's party. That was an, a deleted scene. Cool. Thanks for showing that to me. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. So, uh, okay. So, Sinister. Sinister. This one we're going to talk a little bit more in detail about, yes. I guess. Or we can we can talk in detail. We'll see. It's a five-year-old movie. We might as well. Well, I mean, people should have watched it by now. Yeah, I feel like everybody who's going to see Sinister has seen it by now. Well, I mean, the Viewsters should have watched it by now. They That's knew, also true. They knew it was coming. Viewsters, you watch Sinister, right? If not, continue... At your own risk. So, Ethan Hawke. Yes. Are you pulling it up on your phone? Yes. Ethan Hawke plays a writer who uh, writes true crime books. Ooh. And his uh, one of his books uh, led to the false imprisonment of someone. Um, he also is very critical of police, which the police don't love. Right. Um, and, uh, and so one book went really, really well, and his other books didn't do well. And he's sort of got like a black mark on his record. And he's hot on the trail of a new story about a family that was murdered in their backyard. <gasps> and unbeknownst to his wife and children, he moves them into the house. Into the house where the murders took place? Yeah. Oh, my God. I do love when he's explaining to his wife, I promise, honey, we didn't move yeah, she's three like, doors down from the house where the murders took place, yeah. or whatever his excuse was. That was pretty hilarious. So as they're going through the house, he, he hears some stuff in the attic and goes up there and finds a box of home movies. Oh, no. And uh, when he watches them, he sees something. Sinister. Sinister. Um, and he finds these snuff films, essentially, of these families getting... Murdered. Murdered by an unknown assailant, someone that you can't see. Right. Like the family that gets hung from the tree, their ropes are tied to a big heavy tree branch. Yeah. And you see like a little tree saw thing cutting right. through, but it looks like it's just kind of moving on its own. You can't really see much with that. Um, and it's explained at the end of the film. Yeah, that um, is a pretty gnarly opening segment, man. Like, the movie just flat out opens with four people all being hanged at yeah. the same time. That's crazy. Um, that's the only murder that takes place during the day. That's true, huh? Yeah. Wow. And uh, one of the families has a chihuahua, and the chihuahua does not die. Well, that's good. Yep. The chihuahua's just freaking out. Like poor, this, little, poor little freak out. Like this chihuahua in my lap. He's um, being calmer now. He's shaking up. Aww. Batty. So, uh, what, what happens here? What do we learn about? Well, uh, as he watches more and more of the movies uh, in his house where they just never turn on a light. I'm glad you brought that up. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, you know, just more sort of haunting things start to take place around his house. Um, he's got a son who's what would you say like 12 years old who has these sort of night terrors that that actually uh cause him to get up out of his bed and start moving around climbing into boxes yeah climbing into boxes and not realizing what he's doing and uh it's pretty gnarly uh they 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 definitely make it seem like the kid might be full-on possessed when when these night terrors are happening and he gets he gets into trouble at school for like drawing inappropriate stuff oh yeah i'm trying to remember what the picture was that he drew because his little sister is also painting on the walls in her bedroom and And that's an important piece of yeah she winds up painting uh you know mr sinister guys is uh the bagul the bagul she winds up painting him 
on her wall and he's a terrifying figure um yeah oh this, is, this, is a, this is a pretty great moment so he watches these videos and eventually starts to notice that there's something in the background of watching or yeah the scary face under the, the water in the pool oh yeah the pool um, one's real scary the pool stuff they actually shot that um and uh had a lot of a lot of issues because um, they actually pulled those people tied to those chairs into the water. Oh my God! Yeah, and they I had feel to like, like that could have been faked plenty of ways. Yeah, but they didn't. They they did it, and uh, the bagul walking under the water is also you know not easy to do. Right. Um, I think they tried to figure out a way to like impose it, superimpose it, but it didn't work. So they had oh. to actually do something. But uh, he takes a, so he get, takes photos, screenshots from all these things. Yeah. And there's a great moment when he's on the phone and the, the bagul is on on the laptop, and then it turns and looks at him. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. It was my favorite moment in the movie, I think. It's good. It's good and scary. Um, yeah. Oh, that bagul. He gives me the creeps. He's got a scary demon face. He dresses. Just kind of like a heavy metal, uh, thing, yeah. like a Columbine kit or something. Oh gosh, that's true, huh? Yeah, kind oh, of. Oh man, um, I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah, so there's there's some cool like harbingers in the movie. Uh, so when he first goes up into the attic, uh, he what does he find and what what attacks him? Or uh, what, what I think first him? it's a scorpion. The scorpion out there in the fairly rural like suburbia, he finds yeah. a scorpion in his attic. And then, then uh, there's uh, some snakes. A black snake uh, comes after him at one point. Yeah. And uh, we got dog. the funny cop. Wait, what happens with the dog? You remember the dog outside? Remember he goes out with the, with the bat and the flashlight and he oh, drops yeah. the bat and leaves it and has to go back out for it? That's a bad idea. And the dog's there. Ladies and gentlemen, if you ever find yourself living in a horror movie... Keep your baseball bat in your hands at or, all times. Or just go get it when it's daylight. <clears throat> or just go get it when it's daylight, yes. Yes. So yeah, he encounters the dog outside. Uh, all, as we learn later in the film, they're all forms that the bagul takes in the, in the lore. Oh no! The scorpion, the snake. The those, hound dog. The hound dog. Those things get uh, painted on walls and things. Yeah. Um... Bagul's bad. If you think your kids might be messing around with Bagul, stop them. What do you think about the the method of like how they figured out or why each of the families were chosen? I thought that was kind of cool. Oh well, yeah, wasn't it that um, basically the Bagul sort of started in one house? Yeah. With one family. Yep. And basically. Um, would would sort of uh, entice one of the children in the family yep. to to murder the family for Bagul, and then he would sort of steal the kid away. So basically, each family murder also had a missing persons case along with it. Yeah. Then, whatever family moved into that house next would be tormented by Bagul, and then when they moved away to a new house. Bagul would have one of the children kill that family. Then when someone moved into that new house, and so on and so forth. So right. here, Ethan Hawke's character, Ellison Oswalt, uh, has now moved his family into this house to write a book on the murders that took place in this house. And what has he done? He's cursed his whole family right. with the curse of the Bagul. Um, it's scary. Now, he figures out a lot of this stuff with the help of a deputy. Yeah. What is, how, does he, how does he refer to the deputy in the, uh, in the film? Do you remember? Uh, they only list him here as deputy, played by a very funny James Ransone. But they, they call him something, right? They, they don't call he calls him, him deputy dog. Do not they? deputy dog, but it's something like you always have a so-and-so to help you. Not like right hand man, but something along those lines. But it's like deputy. I really something. do not remember that that line. Oh man, let me look it up. I'm for even you. looking in the quotes. There's nothing in the quotes, huh? There's not, like one quote. Not that oh, I'm, I'm seeing. On wrong, I'm on the wrong movie. Hmm. Here I'll tell you. I'll tell you here. 
here. You talk about the deputy. In deputy it. so-and-so? Deputy so-and-so. Yeah. Yeah, they refer to him the whole movie. They never say his name. Right. He's always referred to as deputy so-and-so. You know, you always have a, a deputy so-and-so who helps, who helps you crack the case. And deputy so, so-and-so. So he refers to him as deputy so-and-so even in his phone, book, in his phone uh, contact list. Which I thought was clever. That's true. I really like that guy. What else has that guy been in? James you know? Ransone. Let's see here. Uh, <clears throat> he was also in My Dreams since watching this movie. Now, let's see. Uh, ooh, he's in The Clapper 2017. Don't know anything about that. Somebody in this room auditioned for that. All right. He's in uh, Gemini, LA Times. Light up the night in a valley of violence. Well, here's one I wanted to tell you about. So Bosch, go he, on. He's in Sinister Two. He's the main character of Sinister Two. Oh, cool. Um, and which I have not seen. And I won't go too. Yeah, I won't go too into it because maybe we should watch it at some point just for fun, not not necessarily for the podcast. Um, but they go into more about how the Bagul chooses which children. Oh no. Uh, and so that's important. And they planted that seed very firmly in this first film. Yeah. Which I thought was really cool. Um, so in in the end in the end of the film, yeah, we we find out uh, he gets he, he he has something in an envelope, right? He gets one he gets one last thing delivered. Remember? Isn't it the 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 whole box full of uh, the he, projector in the movie room? The box the the box does show up, but he gets an um, an envelope full of film ends. Oh yeah, and he gets all the essentially the deleted scenes, the, right. the endings that were cut, the director's cut essentially, um, and uh, and it reveals that it was the children that had killed no. all of the people. Yeah, it does. And you you brought up a couple of things. You brought Very up. Scary let's children. talk about the lighting in the film. All right. Um, it drove you bananas. Bananas. You were like, open a curtain. Yeah. But there's a really good reason why they didn't do that. Go on. What do we know about Ellison in the film? What do we observe Ellison do throughout the film? He likes to drink. He drinks. He intends to write. Yep. What do we not see Ellison do? Sleep. Okay. Yeah, maybe we see him sleep. We see him I sleep. Feel like we, don't. we see him sit up all night and then fall asleep. Yeah. Um, he never. I never see him take a dump. Okay. Or pee pee. How about go to the grocery store? Yeah. Or go to the hardware store. Wow. Yeah. He never leaves the house. He doesn't never leave the house. He even has that great interaction with the guy from the college who's like the expert on demons on Skype. And he only does it on Skype. Exactly. Who played that guy? I remember him being Vincent somebody Vincent D'Onofrio. Before. That's who it was. Yeah. So um, you have this guy who has been like sort of ridiculed by society. Yeah. And he's not even comfortable being in his own home anymore. So he moves his family away. And he creates this like cave. And he just continues to drink and drink and drink. So we know a couple of things. So the, it's dark for a couple of reasons. One, you're right. He doesn't sleep at night. Yeah. He is an alcoholic. Um, they allude to it multiple times in the film, but they never actually really go there. Right. Um, the deputy so and so sort of tries to confront him about it. Yeah. Um, and he is completely avoiding the outside world, which is, which is crucial because the the only times we see him outside of the house are actually still on the property of the home. Like he's getting stuff out of the the car at the beginning of the right. film. Right. Um, and then when he's outside where the dog is, it's at night. Nighttime with a baseball bat. Right. So the curtains and the darkness, I think, is like integral not to just setting the mood, because obviously it's a good trope, horror movie trope. Yeah. But I think it's really important to the character and sort of like all of the hints that they've sort of dropped about this guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just it's something I actually really appreciate it. That's pretty cool. That's a good way to look at it. I, I could see how it would be annoying. Yeah, because, I mean, when you're in your house at night and you're hearing crazy weird stuff going on, flick some lights on, some please, lights on. First for the thing love I of do. God. Please flick some lights on. I live in this, this house now, and I'm like, I hear stuff upstairs. So I like I definitely turn lights on. Do. Keep doing that. Yeah. Continue to turn lights on and observe your surroundings. But, uh, 
Yeah, so so that's that. Sinister. Um, they run away. They get back to their previous house, yeah. which is like a damn palace. Yeah. And then things take a turn for the even worse. <laughs> well, you mean, when you were watching it, you were like, the Bagul wrote him a note, like wrote a, an envelope for him, like addressed an envelope for him. Yeah. And my point uh, to you was once you once you find out that the daughter has so earlier in the film, yeah. Do you remember the coffee scene earlier in the film? The coffee scene. Um, it's like the first morning, I think, that they're there, and um, the little girl is asking the mom what she's doing. She says, "I'm making coffee for your father, but he likes it a very specific way." And she says, "Can I help?" And the mother teaches the daughter how to make the coffee. All right. Which is crucial to the end of the film. Yeah. Good writing. Right. Um, so she teaches the daughter how to use the French press and make the coffee. So at the end of the film, he gets drugged by drinking the coffee that the no. little girl has made. And you find out, you realize that she made the coffee because she left a note for him with yeah. the cup. And then you see that it wasn't the Bagul that wrote the message to him. It was the little girl who, who has been, you know, so, putting stuff in the attic or... Yeah. You know, bringing stuff to the new house or oh leaving an envelope full of film ends. Right. Little girl with her sinister plans ha -ha. about home movies and coffee. Yes, yeah, so I just, I, I don't know. There's something I really liked about the movie in that um, they, they planted all of these little seeds throughout the film. And they, um, instead of assuming that the audience is complete, completely stupid, yeah. they... Um, give them some credit and they go, they'll figure this stuff out. And if they don't figure it out, they'll understand that that the movie works for some reason. Yeah. I mean, that happens a lot. It sure does. Um, so I liked, I liked that they didn't assume we were idiots. I do appreciate when a movie doesn't do I'm a idiot. Yeah. Look, he wants his bed now. Yeah, can you have his bed? I gotta give the dog his bed. We so, are having quite the day. With this dog. Oh, um, get up. Any, any other thoughts about about? I, don't know. I mean, look, it was pretty sinister. cool. You know, it sounds like maybe, maybe that's the kind of movie that would also be good on the second time around. Yeah. But uh, just gonna yawn on microphone. That's always good. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in a rush to see it. Like, I don't. I don't think it was necessarily bad. I think there. I've definitely sat through much worse horror movies than that. Right. Um. Well, I think. I think too. Like. I would recommend you see the second one before watching the first one again the second time. All right. I, I sort of suspect some of the stuff from the second film is stuff that they ended up cutting out. They were oh. like, it would have been nice to include reasons why the yeah. Google chooses which child. Um, because you could see that if that information was planted early in the film, yeah. you would suspect both of those children. Right. Um, and I think they did away with it. One, because they didn't want you to know that the, the kid was going to be involved at the end. Right. And two, if you did suspect one of the children, they wanted you to just fully suspect the weird kid who's like right. crab walking out of a box. <laughs> yeah. That's, what, that's a, such a great creepy moment uh, yeah, where that, that kid kind of yeah. pours himself out of the box. Like one of those, um, you know, those little snakes that you get on the 4th of July. They're like oh, little yeah. pellets and, you, and it like just kind of pours itself out. Right. Yeah, that that's was that definitely a very good scare and a very creepy and inventive scare. I've never... Uh, I've never seen that. Yeah, you're not, not quite sure if he's really seeing it. Or, right. Yeah. You're just like, what could possibly be going on here? Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Pretty cool. Well, way to go, Sinister. How are you feeling about it now? I guess better. Do you, do you feel better now that we've talked about it? I do. Yeah. Yeah. You were worried about that film before we watched it. I was, man. I remember seeing the trailers for it and just being like, mm, that just looks like it's probably just going to have a whole lot of jump scares trying to freak me out. And, you know, I don't like that guy's demon face. And mm -hmm. uh, Hey, man, I'll tell you. I'm worried. Living in, a, living in a house at night, hearing the noises the house makes after watching sure. that movie. Mm. Right. I remember when we started it and I, I looked at Desi and I said... Oh, yeah, by the way, this is going to make you feel real uneasy about living in this house. Uh, well, mission accomplished. Yeah, good stuff. Sinister. So there it is. If you're listening, you've watched it. We should tell them what to watch next. 
Yeah, this has been a fast episode. I know, right? Because there wasn't a lot of subtext in this film. I mean, we what there was, we talked about, and it was pretty easy to just kind of identify it and, and describe it. Very true. Um, it's no, like, American Paris or Single Man or right. anything like that. Bicycle Thief. Oh, boy. That might be one of my least favorite films that we've watched. Ooh, yeah. I get it. I get, like, why, it w- why it's considered to be so good, but just looking back on it, I'd watch Dr. Zhivago again over Bicycle Thief. Really? I think, yeah. At wow. least Dr. Zhivago, like, continues to move. It moves slowly. It's Very not even that it moves slowly. slowly. It's not that it moves slowly. It's that it's really long. Yes. You know, although I do remember where, when we were talking about it, it makes three hours feel like six. Yeah. It does move, it does move pretty slow. But I would, I would much rather watch that than Bicycle Thief again. I think Bicycle Thief's only like an hour and a half. Wow, really? Yeah, it felt long, right? That movie feels long, too. Yeah. I think I would rather watch uh, Sinister again over Bicycle Thief or Dr. Shaw. I mean, I, yeah, I, I can't think of a movie that I just really wouldn't want to watch again. I don't think I'd want to watch Tootsie again. I don't think I'd want to watch Bicycle Thieves again. But what I about, get why um, we watched them. I mean, I get why they're in the bucket. What about... Uh, um, no, not that one. So, if you're just, if you're listening to our podcast for the first time, what we do is every episode, at the end of the episode, we draw a movie out of a bucket. We don't know what we're going to get. We don't. Um, and that, we do it at the end of the episode, so that way it gives you an opportunity, opportunity right. to watch the film before our next episode. Kind of like a book club. You know, yeah. like you, you get a book, cl- a book, and then you read it, and then you guys all meet together and you chat about what it, what you thought about it. Meeting and chatting. Um, and like a book club, I would like to hear other people's thoughts, mm. differing opinions, things that they noticed that we didn't talk about. Um, hit us up on our Facebook page. Definitely like it if you haven't liked it. Um, share the podcast with people, and definitely yeah. tweet at us and let us know what you like and what you don't like and what you want to see and hear. Send us those tweets. I'm gonna go get the Muppet bucket. movies. Wes is going to get the bucket. We call it the Muppet bucket because it's got Muppets all around. It does have Muppets? On. I, I stopped talking because I was like, I'm moving away from the microphone, but I brought oh, the microphone with me. You so. brought the microphone with you, and the dog came with you. Yeah. So, uh, so Wes is going to shake up the contents of the Muppet bucket. It's got a bunch of slivers of paper in it. Yeah. I'm going to reach into the bucket, and I'm going to reach. I better dig deep this time because I feel like I've pulled some duds lately. Oh. And, you know. You pulled Sinister. Yeah, that's true, and that was pretty cool. But uh, let's see here. here. All right. Oh, boy. I want to get a real good mix. I want to really mix the cement around. I'd like for us to, you know, go out and see a theatrical film, too. We'll see if that happens. Oh, boy. Stuff's falling on the floor. Oh, man. What you got there, buddy? Wild Tales. Wild Tales. Excellent. Okay. I've seen that one. You've seen Wild Tales? Which means you have not. I have not seen Wild Tales. Is it, like, wild and... It's pretty wild. It's um. Is it about dogs? It's not. It's a. Uh, it's an anthology film, which I love. Anthology which one films. fell? Should I read it? Uh, you. Sh- what you got there? He's making a face. It's uh, Sunrise. Oh, it's one of my favorites. Should we say that? But that goes back in the bucket. Is that Sunrise with uh, Chris Evans and uh, Killian Murphy? No, it's Sunrise, um, as in the silent film, one of the last dying. Breeds. Ooh. It's a it's a, a beautiful beautiful film. I love it. It's a kind of a romantic comedy drama thing. Well, um, and it's uh, ooh. Ooh, little footsies going on there, and I, yeah, I love Sunrise. Sunrise, fantastic film. But that's not what we're watching. Wild Tales. We are watching Wild Tales. It's an anthology film. It's foreign, um, and uh, it's very very funny. It's a comedy. Cool. Um, bunch of short stories. And uh, it's a really nice mixture of like how to do comedy, like classic comedy correctly, right. mixed with modern like dark humor. It's, it's really, really fun. What uh, year would you say it came out? Uh, 2015, maybe. Wild Tales. Yeah, I saw it at a film festival and I, I just thought it was so much fun and no, not that many people have heard it of it like you haven't heard of it. 
Um, I really have not. And uh, I thought it would be a good one to highlight for the podcast. Uh, Viewsters, watch this movie. It's a lot of fun. You'll know after the opening scene. Yeah. Whether you're going to dig this kind of comedy or not. Okay. But it is super fantastic. But once you watch that opening scene, if you like that, you're going to like the rest of the movie. Interesting. Yeah. Wild Tales. A lot of fun. Not for kids. Now I'm excited. Not for the cheerins. All right. So if you're listening, do not watch Wild Tales with your children. Watch it with a friend who is of adult age. Mm Mm-hmm. And get ready to laugh. Sounds like you should get ready to laugh. Yep. And we're going to go watch it. And you'll hear us talk about it on the next episode of View the Right Thing. All right, everybody. In the meantime, uh, make sure you tweet at us at VTRT Movies. And we will talk to you next time. Bon Cinema.